fellow movers and groovers. Um, there's two purposes for this video. The first is that I want to tell a story, the story about Lionel Blau, a man that I met about a month ago in Makanda. Um, and that story I hope will inspire you as it has inspired me. Um, I will do this while balancing on this wooden pole. It's in the spirit of the story, the message. Um, the second purpose is uh, honoring a commitment that I made to tell his story in some form. I will try in another means at some stage. Um, Lionel is a runner. I met him in Makanda about a month ago. We'll see how long this balancing act lasts. Um, about a month ago, you could see by his features that he was a runner, very slim um, and agile. We got chatting uh, and what I hope to impress most on you is just the role that running plays in his life and um, his love for running, his practice. Um, his approach to it and his relation to it really shifted and catalyzed a change or a shift in my relation to my own practice. Um, so for you, fellow practitioners, I hope to communicate some of that. Um, Lionel lives in poverty. Uh, he has no phone, no ID book, no bank card. All the money that he gets goes straight to food or running shoes, but he'll often run with different shoes. Um, he only eats rice. About 15 years ago, he got uh, MDR TB, which is multi drug resistant TB. And he's had it three times. In the hospital on one of the occasions, whilst everybody was dying around him in the hospital beds, uh, he was just prompted to do something about it and the immediate thing was to, to run. So he started running then in the hospital in and, in a, and around his ward. <clears throat> Since then running has been a, an everyday thing for him, it's been his practice. It was the thing that helped him regain health and it's the thing that gives his life purpose and meaning now. Um, I'm sure many of you uh, who have a practice and practice in public spaces are familiar with glances at your activity that's not normal or in the usual array of activity in public spaces. For Lionel, the reception of his, con of his context to his activity, to running, was, was not just like subtle glances, but very expressive and vocalized judgment and mocking. Um, this man that's running in the rain and running every day like a, like a crazy man, uh, mocked for it really. Uh, when you're speaking about it, you can see the way that it affected him. But, and this was what was so remarkable about him, is that he, he understood that the place that it was coming from, like his, uh, the pain and the suffering in his, in his context, and that toxicity and where the toxicity comes from that locks people into these... Oh, she... I just saw a policeman, so... <laughs> but, that locks him into this mo Hey! How you doing, man? Um, that locks him into this locks his fellows into a mode of being like it, so constricted that even his, his simple act of running or his practice of running was mocked and uh, constrained 
The police just had a good long stare at me. <laughs> um, the yeah, the thing that that most moved me um, was the way that he describes the importance of his practice to himself and his community. He says that by his running and his commitment to his running. He says something to his community that he can say in no other way. That he has no other means of saying. The running says that. And his commitment to his running says that thing. <sighs> yeah. His being, his person, and his story has deeply impacted me and it's helped me reflect and understand on the way that I relate to my own practice, where I practice, why I practice and how I relate to that and how my movement and being has or is necessarily socially located and how my commitment exists in that location. So Lionel, if you ever see this, bless you bro. <laughs> um, thank you and I hope we meet again. Um, I hope to keep sharing your story and the, the, the way that it has inspired me. Um, Shreet, strength to your practice.